Well, when meditating on the gospel, we realize that getting through the day would be very difficult if we were completely deaf in this age. Now, for a deaf person in the first century, that was not just deaf, but speech handicapped too, things would be extremely difficult. No, no subtitles, well, no TV at all. No universal sign language, no cochlear implants to look forward to. But there would be plenty of isolation and frustration and alienation. Now, this is the reality that the gospel recounts for us this morning. So the deaf man is brought before Jesus. Okay, so far. Fine and dandy. But the more I look at this, isn't the way Jesus cures the man rather odd? Odd indeed. And I don't even mean the fingers in the ear or the spittle part. We'll talk a bit about that later. He cures the deaf man by speaking to him. Does he not? Ponder that for a moment or three. He says, Ephatha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. With any other person, those words would have been out, entered his ear, and then fallen away, unheard and unheeded. And then I got to thinking, is it possible that I am like the deaf man? Am I deaf and have a stoppage of speech as well? The good words from God come from those around us that are faithful and fall upon my ears. But even though they enter my ears, the word of the Lord remains unheard and unheeded. Maybe it's the godly advice that a loved one gives when we're making big life decisions. Maybe it's something read from Holy Scripture. Maybe something written in the, the lives of the great saints and God's truth speaks to us. Whatever the source, do I or you, like the deaf man in his former state, move on without actually hearing what was said. But why is it so important for us to hear those God-spoken words through Christ and the church? Because there's many times when we're approached, we're rebuked or encouraged or what else? Is there anything more? Rebuked? Built up? Yes. yes. People try to encourage us, build us up in love, and they try to comfort us. They try to motivate us. Maybe even they amaze us with their words. They edify us. And very often I find that the truth spoken to me troubles me, it causes me a trouble inside, not so comfortable inside. These encounters with the Word of God and the Word of the Lord have the power to transform us. And the opening of our ears is the gateway to this transformation. The difference back then was Christ Jesus was physically present for that Donald. The Word of God was standing before him. And it was the Lord that spoke the words of the Lord and have the power to transform the deaf one. Is that true today? Is Christ physically present? 
That one you got to answer. That one's not rhetorical. Is the body of Christ present in this day? We got a yes and a no. Well, does Christ have a body? Yeah. Christ's real human body is transformed. It's an eternal body now, a resurrected body in paradise. But here is the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Christ. And any that hear his words will live, be opened. Be opened. That doesn't matter if those words come from the church, his body, the pillar and bulwark of the truth, or whether those words come from Christ Jesus standing before you. Because in Christ, in the church, that is one and the same reality. Now, don't go off on a tangent thinking you can go around and say, be open to every deaf person and that'll cure them. No, they may be cured, but that's always up to the will of the Lord. But what we're looking for is just as that deaf man, those, those words sank into his soul. It's like they almost bypassed his physical ears and went deep into his soul and changed him, changed him spiritually, but also changed him physically. And the same is true for you and for me right now. Here at the liturgy, for instance, we encounter words like the ones that heal the deaf man. We hear words of life. And as we gather for the liturgy, we have an encounter much the same as the one that Jesus had with the deaf man. We listen to the reading of the gospel. We hear the good news of Christ Jesus, the reality of how God became human to save his creation from the clutches of eternal death. And we have the amazing ability and power within, by way of the Holy Spirit, to hear and to be healed and to be transformed. But there's no guarantee that when the words from truth himself enter into our ears that we will actually hear them, much less obey them, because we are eternally free to keep our ears stopped up. No thank you. But these words from God himself have the power to sink deep into our hearts and souls, into our very being, opening up our truth-seeking ears. And that's the difference. Are your ears seeking truth? Are your ears seeking the person who is the truth? And that we're actually looking and desiring with all our hearts and resources to be transformed by the one who is the truth, transformed and actually live in this age. Well, some would say, well, there's more than just listening to the uh, gospel and the liturgy, isn't there? Well, yes, that's true. The liturgy, yes, it's a gospel encounter, a good news encounter. And it's a, an important part of the liturgy, the gospel that we read and is preached. But there is more to the liturgy than that. And we see an example of that in today's gospel lesson. How so? Christ Jesus speaks the words that transform the deaf man. But he also touches. He touches the deaf man. He touches him on his ears, but he touches him on his tongue. Oh, obviously that makes sense. They wouldn't touch his left great toe if he was healing his tongue. But this intimate action that goes on, it has a deeper significance for us rather than just kind of rational thought or 
practicality. Of course you touch him there. What's the big deal? The deaf man receives the words of life and also the touch of Christ on his tongue, loosing his tongue and allowing his tongue to speak freely and plainly. And what does that person do with his newly found speech? He's told, don't go telling anybody, keep quiet. And instead he speaks to everybody he meets, telling them the wondrous deeds that God has done for him. The church are called to this after the word and son of God touch our ears. We are called to this after the body and blood of Christ touches our tongues. The church received the ability and the zeal to tell everybody about the wondrous things that God has done for us and all creation. The tongues of the faithful are not just loosed to speak plainly, but powerfully and with praise and honor and glory to God. So the church has given this gospel account to complete healing for our own healing. That's a strange one, isn't it? It's an account of healing for our own healing. We hear the truth of God with this understanding. Whoever hears his words and believes in the one who sent him has eternal life and will not be condemned and has crossed over from death to life. Because the faithful truly desire to hear the truth at all costs and believe the words of he who was sent by God the Father, they are and will continue to be transformed now and for all eternity. All right, well, we're back to the fingers and the ears and the spit and the touch on the tongue. What do we glean from this? There's, it's a private encounter. He takes the fellow aside. It means that our relationship with God is personal, it's unique, but it's physical. It's physical as well as spiritual. And I think we're forgetting that in this age. And for many, they've already forgotten it long ago. Christ Jesus wasn't just an apparition. It wasn't just a soul rattling around in a body, in a shell. Many Christians think that way. They think that way of themselves, that I'm just a body walking around with a soul rattling inside and I can do whatever I want with my body. That's Gnostic Christianity. Have we forgotten how important our body is to our relationship with God? Do we live as though there's a spirit world and that's one thing? And then there's the physical human world, which is another. Perhaps that's why the teachings of the church, perhaps that's why the mysteries of the church are so very difficult for some to hear and to touch, to taste and to see. Because it's just spiritual, just a spiritual thing. I don't have to include my body, do I? And even if we do believe all these teachings of the church, we still have to struggle to truly live. Aren't we used to having our own space, our own way of being that's kind of distanced from our Sunday go to meeting way of being? Well, that may be true for some, but we must realize that that isn't the church. Christ healed the deaf and mute man with a touch of his hand, a spit and a touch from his mouth. Very personal. Very unique for that one human being. In the same way he reaches out today 
to each and every person, body and soul, in a very intimate and unique way for each and every one of us. Well, I don't know about you, but there was a, a time this week when I sensed, as I sometimes do, I, I doubt you folks do, I sensed that God was absent from me. I don't, your mileage may vary. And I shared that with my dear wife. Right? You didn't like that very much, did you? No. And then I got to thinking that in many ways that sums up today's society that eh, is God really present at all times? Yeah, maybe when we come to, to Sunday liturgy, maybe when we go to a church function or a, a midweek group, something like that. But if God is present and we sense God's presence when we come here, you know, the minute we walk out the door, the air we breathe doesn't seem to be holy. Our car, our home, our office, wherever we might be, doesn't feel all that sacred in any way. And our thoughts are choked up with the endless to-do lists and the endless to buy or consume lists. And if we're brutally honest, I ask the question, does God feel present in most hours of the week? And if that is so, we have failed to truly comprehend and enter into the message of the gospel and receive the physical word and the physical touch of Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is and will continue until his return speaking, Ephatha, be open, be open. We'll hear that all around if we listen, if we keep our eyes and ears open for the truth. Who's a person? And it's the church's hope to hear the words, actually hear the words, and be doers of the words. To let Christ renew us and transform us, to sense the touch of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, and in the hands-on care of the church, God saves us body and soul. St. Paul wrote, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. I don't know if that's as real for you folks, but it is for me sitting beside somebody that's dying. In the eyes of this world, what are we adding? It's a foregone conclusion. They're just gonna throw away the old body anyhow. It's the first and spirit that matters. That's not what the church says. We believe in the resurrection of the body and to sit beside per a person that is dying, meaning their soul will soon separate from their body. One sees the body and the spirit, the soul, in the life of the church, that Christ came to save both. Our bodies are sacred. Our souls are sacred. We are full and whole, a body and a soul. It's in that body and soul that we can sense and feel the touch of Christ in the hands of the priest reaching out to a dying parishioner, to the embrace of a loved one, somebody that's had a death in their family. Those are real touches. Those are human touches that are being made fully human 
by the Holy Spirit of the living God, even if that person isn't a Christian. The church encounters God spiritually and physically. We need that physical touch. We need the words of truth. We need the presence of the priesthood of all believers. That's why we gather together as we're able. We can't do that alone. We can't do it on the golf course. We can't do it in the supermarket. Yes, we can raise our voices in praise and glory of God, but we need one another. We need the physical words and the physical touch of truth to truly live. Because God is present with us, body and soul. In the called out people of God, gathered together as church, in the Psalms, in the lessons, in the gospel, in the confession, in the absolution, in the prayers, in the hymns and the praises, in the silence, in the physical touch of the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ on your tongue. All of it is the same reaching out of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is with us continually saying, Ephatha, be open, be open, and he will heal us. He won't always cure us, but he will heal us. And to that I say, glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.